Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be offering some supplemental instruction for completing this week's report on lab flow using spectrophotometry to determine an equilibrium constant. This one is a little bit tricky uh, because they kind of made a little bit of a mistake here and maybe aren't being super clear. So I do want to help you guys uh, understand exactly what we're doing here. So you start this one off by requesting some virtual data. They kind of show you where they filled that in here. And then they start asking you to fill out this table, KEQ3, with the concentration absorbance of standards. And it's a little unclear what exactly they're talking about here, especially because they just put here concentration and molarity. They don't tell you the concentration of what. So we in order to know what that is, we need to first start thinking about what is really happening here. So what's going on is that we have a solution of iron nitrate, so that's a source of iron 3 plus ions, and that's going to be clear. We also have a solution of sodium uh, thiocyanate that's going to have cyanide ions in it. That's also going to be clear. However, when these two combine together, they form ferrocyanite or ferrothiocyanite ion and this has a red color so what's going to what we can do is we can use the fact that these two are clear and this one is colored uh, in order to distinguish this one from that one and uh, to be able to determine the concentration of this stuff inside of the solution so that's going to be our handle that allows us to figure out at least one of the con uh, components of this reaction. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need to make a Beer's Law plot. But what we need to do is to make sure that uh, we have just this ferrocyanite in the solution. And the natural thing to imagine that we're going to do is we're just going to go buy uh, iron uh, thiocyanite and we're going to put it into uh, some solutions. We're going to vary their concentrations. We're going to measure their absorbance. But the problem is, is that if I did that, if I bought just this and I put it into solution, the reverse of this reaction would happen. Okay. I would have some of the components that would be going back towards this clear side over here. So what we need to do is we need to set up a system where this uh, reaction favors very, very much the products, okay? Uh, and the way that we do that is by providing one of these two reagents in a very clear excess. Le Chatelier's principle and our understanding of equilibrium is going to tell us that if I have a whole bunch of excess iron, it's going to push this uh, equilibrium far, far towards the products. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to combine these two together first for the blank all the way going up to solution 5, where we have a very clear excess of the iron. This is going to allow us to make a big, big assumption. That big, big assumption is going to be that the thiocyanate ion concentration that we initially have is going to be the same as the ferrothiocyanate ion concentration at the end once we've reached equilibrium. So if we go back here to lab flow, we're going to see how we set up those first solutions. Okay, And in, in particular, we're going to see that we have a very clear higher concentration here of our uh, our source of iron 3 ions here, the iron nitrate. That's at 0.2 molar. Our sodium thiocyanate concentration uh, of the stock at least is uh, two orders of magnitude lower than that at 1 times 10 to the negative 3. So there's quite a bit less of this. So we're going to assume that this is completely consumed and ultimately gets converted over to that ferrothiocyanate. Now, to make this a little bit more complicated, and this is where I'm a little frustrated with the lab flow people, uh, we have down here the stock concentration. So the whole idea is here, sure, I might 
set up a table like this and I'll say, yeah, I'd love for this to be 0.2 molar uh, iron nitrate. But in actuality, I may not quite get to that. Okay, so on the bottle, I'm actually going to note the exact concentration it would have had. And in this case, uh, LabFlow does generate these numbers randomly. They do equal exactly each other in the case of the iron nitrate. But we can see that there's some deviation for the uh, sodium thiocyanide. And we can see that they incorrectly labeled it as potassium thiocyanate. Okay, so I just want to make it very clear that moving forward, whenever we're talking about the thiocyanite concentration, okay, for these solutions, we are talking about this right here. Even though they incorrectly labeled it potassium thiocyanite over sodium thiocyanate. They meant to put th sodium thiocyanate there. Okay. So moving forward, the first thing you're going to be asked for here is to figure out the concentration of that iron thiocyanide in our solution. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, make the assumption, like I said, that we can calculate the concentration of the thodi sodium thiocyanide by doing the basic dilution that we would do uh, in the uh, in any other case. And what we're going to do is that we have this concentration. This was the stock uh, potassium thiocyanate that they mislabeled. Okay. And then we're going to have the table of how much sodium thiocyanate was added for that solution. And then we have our final volume, and for that table, we'll see that the final volume is always 25.00 milliliters, okay? And that'll allow us to get the dilution of the sodium thiocyanate stock in that solution. And then we're going to make the assumption, again, based on Le Chatelier's principle, that that is going to equal the iron uh, thiocyanate concentration. If we go back to that table, we'll see that we'll fill out these concentrations, and then we have the absorbances here. So now we have all the data that we need to make a Beer's Law plot. I'm not going to go into great depth on how to do the Beer's Law plot. Uh, I think we've all done these so far quite a few times. But what you're going to do is you're going to take that concentration of iron uh, thiocyanate, okay? by which I mean the values in this column right here. And then we're going to plot those versus the absorbance as the Y, by which I mean this column right here. We will use linear regression to get the equation of that line. Okay. The next thing that we're going to be asked for in lab flow is for the slope of that line and the y-intercept of that line, and it's our squared value. Okay? And then they want us to upload our graph here uh, that can be an Excel file if you want it to be. Now, now that we've done that, we can now determine the concentration of iron thiocyanate in any solution. Okay, we're going to be able to use our graph or just invert that equation that we get in order to be able to uh, measure the absorbance of a solution and then tell how much iron thiocyanide is inside of it. We have another set of solutions here. And what we can see now is that this iron nitrate here has a concentration that is equivalent to the uh, thiocyanide concentration. All right. So now we're going to set up a true equilibrium where we can't make that assumption anymore that we're just going to push that uh, reaction all the way to the right. Okay? We again were given some values that we're actually going to use down here of the stock solutions. Okay? So for iron nitrate, we're not going to use 2 times 10 to the negative 3. We're going to use this 1.8 times 10 to the negative 3. And for the concentration of sodium thionite, cyanite, 
we're going to use 9.8 times 10 to the negative 5 for that. Then we're going to come down here. And basically what they're asking us to do is to fill out an ice table for each and every one of those solutions. And again, I think that this is a little misleading. Okay. What we're going to do for the initial concentration of the iron is the exact same sort of dilution equation that we did before. Notice that this time the final volume is always going to be 10. So we do 5, 1, and 4 is 10, 5, 2, and 3 is 10, 5, 5, and 0 is 10. So we're going to use the exact same thing. We're going to go and find that concentration that was kind of hidden from us a little bit. We're going to use the volume from the table for the iron, and we're going to use a final volume of 10. And we're going to do the same thing for the sodium thiocyanate. Now, when we first put these together, we have a zero concentration for the iron thiocyanate. So that means that this value here is just going to be zero because we, we don't have anything yet. Now I'm going to give you guys a big hint here. We have to figure out our change. If we take a look at the equation as it was set up in, in this table as it was set up in the PDF, we can see that we can already see how these changes are going to play out. So for each one of these, this is going to be negative x, this is going to be negative x, this is going to be plus x. And this is where I think that things are really, really kind of misleading. This seems to me like they're trying to set you up to solve a polynomial, right? To say KEQ equals this thing, and then we solve that to get the equilibrium concentrations. But that is not what we are doing now, OK? We are trying to figure out what k is, so we don't know what it is, so there's no way for us to solve this in that fashion, okay? We're doing experiments now, so we're going to fill in the last bit of this with experimental data. What you're going to do is you're going to go back to your equation that you have here for our Beer's Law plot, okay? You're going to plug in the absorbance. In this case, we're talking about solution 6. So we're going to come up here, and we're going to find the absorbance that solution 6 had right here. OK. We're going to plug that value in for our y value here, and then solve for that x value. And that is what is going to go in here right here. Okay? Now we know that that is x. That means that I can fill out this guy as the initial concentration minus this guy here. Okay? And I can fill out this initial co this guy here as the initial concentration minus that value there. And that is alluded to in this guy right in this uh, ice table that we have right here. Okay? They figured out the final concentration of the iron thiocyanate, and then they took the initial concentrations here, and they subtracted by that value for each one of those. Then we'll have the whole thing here. Now we have all the equilibrium concentrations. We can calculate KEQ. The expression that we're going to use is going to be this guy right here. So those are all the guys that we've just done in the, in the ice table. Okay, we have the iron thiocyanide equilibrium concentration, the iron equilibrium concentration, and the thiocyanide concentration. We'll fill those guys in here, and then uh, we'll solve for KEQ. We're going to do that for all of those solutions, and then we're going to take the average of all of those values. We'll also need to do the standard deviation for each of those values. And then they're going to ask us for the relative standard deviation. The relative standard deviation is going to be the standard deviation divided by the average KEQ times 100%. After that, you just answer a couple of questions and upload your files that you use for uh, making those Excel sheets and stuff and doing your calculations. And then you can submit your uh, final answer. As always, if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out.